Hello, a great welcome to the series on Abacus. Myself is Jaraj NP. This is tutorial number 11 and demonstrates the application of a bolt retention. So let us first go through the problem statement. So as shown here, this tutorial basically uses a simple model uh, which is essentially a rectangular hollow section of dimensions 200 wide by 400 mm deep and it has a thickness of 10 mm and the root radius is 10 mm and uh, as you can see that it has uh, a total length of 600 mm and both the ends of this tube it is pinned at the ends and it is provided with a bolt of M24 diameter at the center as shown here which will be pretensioned in our tutorial and the dimensions of the bolt are shown here the head has a dimension of 40 by 15 mm thick and the shank length will be 200 mm and this is to ensure that uh, the bolt it is a through bolt which passes through the section and accordingly the shank length will be equal to 200 mm and the hole diameter will be 26 mm we will use a single material here that is uh, a steel with an E value of 2.1 into 10 to 5 Newton per mm square and a Poisson's ratio of 0.3 and we shall perform only an elastic analysis here so let us start modeling the parts as already explained we have two parts one is the rectangular hollow section and the second one is the power through bolt so let us start with the beam portion which is essentially the rectangular hollow section so the modeling space will be 3D deformable, solid extrusion and all this is okay for us. So let us first draw a rectangle. So let us keep the dimensions as a 200, 200 by 400. By 400, okay. So now let us do one thing, let us move this rectangle to the center of this uh, sketcher system. So we shall move it first. So we will do the translation. So we want to just move this. This is just for the convenience. Done. So let us just pick the start position as this one. And I want to move to 100 to 0. Okay, fine. So now you can see that it is a placed symmetrical to the sketcher's axis system. Now let us introduce the uh, the so-called uh, root portion. So we shall use uh, uh, create the fillet system here. So press it over here. So we shall select a fillet radius of 20 mm. So select the first entity. Second. Okay, you can see that yes, a fillet is formed. Okay. Okay, so we have uh, formed the fillet set of four corners of the section. Now we shall uh, create a small offset. Okay, so that we will be able to generate the inner surface as well. So we shall go here that is uh, offset curves. So press it here. So select the entity which is the offset. So let us agree the or select the entire rectangle. So done. So we know that the section thickness is 10 mm. So we have selected the offset distance of 10 mm. Okay. Now it asks us whether uh, the offset shown is correct. So this is the original one. This is the offset. So it is axial pointers. Okay. So this means that we have completed our sketching. We can proceed. Uh, straight away for uh, the extrusion. So, so done. So now the length will be 600 mm. So input 600 mm. Okay. So as you can see that yes, the cross section is generated. So let us first proceed for partitioning the cross section. This is because as you can see that yes, it consists of the straight areas. Also, it consists of the curved areas. So it is always better to do the partitioning uh, that will help us uh, a lot in the machine activity as well. So let us uh, first proceed for uh, the partitioning. So go here and uh, define the cutting plane. Okay, the point and the normal. So
to find. So let us first have a horizontal section. Okay, you can see that yes, it is split into two parts. Now similarly, let's proceed for uh, having uh, the other section also, other partition also. So we shall proceed in the same way and the partitions. Done. It's so point in the normal. So let us select this point and this line. Create partition. You can see that yes, a particular line is. So we'll be the same strategy. So let us select the entire one. Okay, select the done and the point in the normal. So you can select this point and select this line. So create the partition. So let us see whether the partition is complete or not. Yes, so here I think that uh, one horizontal partition is also required. So let us proceed in the same way. So let us select the entire one. Okay, fine. So as you can see that yes, our uh, partitioning across the cross section is complete. So as you can see that yes, we have uh, split the uh, space segments and the code segments are separate. So look here. So you can see that yes, there's a straight portion and so this is also straight, straight portion here and these are the code portions. Okay, so this will be the first activity that, that you will do. Because uh, partitioning will uh, straight away help us in doing an efficient meshing operation. So let us now proceed for uh, creating the hall. So we shall go here. That is uh, create cut extrude. Okay. So select a plane for the. So this will be the plane, and this will be our right side. Okay. So now let us sketch the hall first. So, so so let us sketch the section so that is a so let us proceed for sketching the section so we shall first proceed for uh, creating a hall okay so set the radius we know that the radius of the hall has to be 13 mm so set to 13 mm okay so, so our sketching is complete. So let us proceed for the extrusion. So as you can see that, yes, it asks you whether it is to be extruded in this direction. Yes, it has to be the right direction. And indicate that we want it to extrude through throughout the section. So select through all. So OK. So as you can see that, yes, we have created a cut on both the faces of the section. So on this side, let us also see the other side. Yes, it is there on the other side also. So once that is over, let us again proceed for the partitioning. So let us partition in such a way that we create a part two partition planes, one along each of this diametrical axis of the hall. So we shall proceed in the same direction. So go for the cells, define cutting plane. So select the cells to partition. So the procedure is exactly the same. So done, okay. And uh, so let us go for the point and the normal the same. I would prefer to have it in that method only. So the point and normal, so it will uh, specifically ask you first pick the point. 
Let us first define the horizontal plane. So we should pass through this and it should be perpendicular to this edge. Create partition. Okay, fine. Now let us proceed for uh, creating the vertical partition. Okay, done. And point normal. It should pass through this point and it should be normal to this line. Create. Okay, so you can see that yes, our partitioning is complete. So we look here. It is partitioned into the the front face itself, you can see that is partitioned into the four parts. And please also check the other side also whether the partitioning operation is carried out properly. Yes, as you can see that it is done on the other side also. Fine. So means uh, we have uh, created the part for uh, the rectangular uh, hollow section. And uh, we did the partitioning across the cross section as well as uh, along the length. Uh, and we also introduced a hall for uh, for accommodating our bolt. Now we can uh, study a proceed for uh, creating the second part. So we can just pause it. So let us call it as a bolt. And uh, all these parameters will keep the same. And instead of this, I will keep a little bit less. So 300. Continue. Okay. So let us start creating a head then the shank. So the head we know. It is just a radius of 20 mm. 20 mm. And uh, so that's okay. Mm, so, so let us proceed for extrusion. And we know that uh, the head thickness is 15 mm. 15 mm. Okay. Okay, that's good. So let us start creating uh, the shank and the other head also in a similar way. So we shall proceed for uh, for the same uh, create is already through the extrude. Okay, proceed. So plus you select the plane. Okay, and also select an edge. Fine. Okay. Now let us uh, proceed in drawing the shank cross section. And we know that the shank radius is a uh, 24 mm die. That is radius of 12 mm. So. Have it as a turnamon. Okay. So let us proceed for the extrusion. Done. And uh, we know that the total depth of extrusion should be the shank length, that's 200 mm. It's okay. So you can say that yes, the shank is also generated. And uh, let us uh, create also the head on the other side. So now proceed in the same direction. Select this face, select this edge. Okay. And uh, let us draw a circle that represents the head again. And uh, let us keep its uh, radius. We know that it should be 20 mm. 20 mm. Okay. So that's complete. And now let us proceed for the extrusion. And it's a blind. And the thickness will be uh, 15 mm. 15 mm. Okay. So now you can see that yes. We have done the, uh, the creation of the part for the bolt. Now, immediately after doing the uh, part, proceed for the partition because this will be used for our machine. So, let us first divide this into uh, four equal parts. So, we shall proceed for the partition. Okay, create partition. And then uh, here, uh, first, uh, we will use the sketch it. We'll use this face. And we'll select uh, so okay this done and let us select an edge also okay fine so let us uh, draw uh, two lines along the diametrix so this is one diameter axis and let us also draw the vertical one vertical one okay so this means that our sketching it is done Okay, so you can see that yes, it is uh, already sketched. We have sketched two lines. And please remember that sketching is done to help us to do the partition using the method available to us. Okay, so let us proceed for the partition now. So we'll use of this one. Okay, so let us do the horizontal partition first. So define cutting plane. So the point at the normal. So select this point. Okay, so this point and it should be normal to this line. 
So create a partition. Now let us proceed for uh, the vertical partition. Select all these things. Done. Okay, point of the normal. So you should pass through this line. It should be normal to this line. Okay, create partition. Okay, so you can see that yes, we have completed our partition. You can see that yes, the bolt is divided into. Okay, so four segments along its length. One, two, three, four. Now we would like to do one more partition. That is uh, exactly at the uh, mid length of this bolt. And uh, this partitioning will be required because in the later part of this tutorial, we need to apply a uh, pretension. And this is a pretension we would like to apply at the midsection. So let us do the one more partitioning here. So let us do the Y set is okay. So let us select the cells to partition. So we'll select the entire one. Okay, and done. And the point on the normal. And we can select one point here that is our midpoint. Okay, and it should be uh, normal to obviously uh, it should be normal to this axis. Okay, that's good enough. Create yes. So you can see that yes. Now the, we have partitioned this again. Okay, using a section that passes through the mid mid length, and this will be used for applying the. So we have to have a cross section here that will help us in applying the pretension. So this means that uh, the partitioning of the bolt is also over. Now we can uh, straight away go to the other module that's a property. As I already told, we have only one property that is a steel, which we will use uh, both for the bolt as well as for the, uh, the rectangle hollow section part. So steel select steel, select the mechanical, and here we have only elastic properties. So let's uh, have it as 2.1 E5 and uh, it will be 0 0.30, 0 0.30. And uh, remember that we'll be performing only an elastic analysis here. And secondly, we'll be using uh, consistently all throughout this tutorial, Newton and millimeters. So this means that we have defined the property, okay? Now let's create a section with this property. So we'll see that section steel. Okay, this is okay for us and let us this is also acceptable so now let us start assigning the sections to the parts we'll first select the beam so assign this a section so select the regions select the regions done okay now this is okay for us okay so we find that yes the section along with the property is assigned to our rectangular arches portion now let us select the bolt Okay, let us assign the same material. Okay, so select the regions. Right, done. Now, this is okay for us. Okay, so this means uh, we have assigned the correct properties to both the parts, that is to the rectangular hollow section RHS and also to the bolt. Now we can proceed for the next module, that is the assembly. As you know, the, in this module, we need to place all the segments correctly. Okay, so let us start creating the instance of the various parts. So we shall start with the beam first. Okay, so this is okay for us. Now we need to place our bolt properly. Okay, so that it passes through this hall. So let us create an instance of the bolt. So bolt here. Okay, so remember the instance type we'll choose it as dependent with the machine will be done on the part. Okay, so this is okay for us. So now uh, we shall proceed for uh, adjusting, translating, rotating the various components okay, in order to arrive at the final model. So as you can see that first of all we need to rotate, okay, we need to rotate the bolt okay, to 90 degree. It has to come to this parallel to the x-axis. So let us first rotate the bolt. So we shall use the rotate instance. So select the bolt, okay, so done, fine. Now we need to select the axis of rotation. So let us select the axis of rotation properly. Okay, I want to rotate it about the vertical axis. So I'll select one point over here and the other point I will select along this. Okay, so 90 degrees is okay for me. So 
and we just zoom it. Yes, as you can see that it is correctly rotated and this final position is accessible to me. Now uh, we need to translate the boot so that it will be coaxial in the hall. Go to the coaxial constraint. Okay, so select the cylindrical surfaces. The more builds is the surface. And the next one, okay, this will be the surface. And we can see that the points are uh, directed in the same direction. So this is okay for us. So you can see that yes, the bolt is now placed coaxially. Now we need to uh, move this again along the minus z axis so that uh, this bolt, the, the underside of this bolt head, it touches the surface. So obviously this can be done very easily using the face to face constraint. Okay, so we shall use the face to face constraint here. So select the so I think uh, we can select this surface. It's okay for us. Okay, select this surface also. And this normals, check they are pointing in the same direction, okay. And this a distance should be 15 mm, that's head thickness. Yes, so this means that we have completed our assembly. As you can see, please see whether it is being rightly populated or not. Just look at the model. You can see that yes, the bolt passing through the cross section. And you can see that yes, we have got the head or the other head also resting properly on the opposite face. So this means that our assembly is complete. So let us go to the other module that is the step. So let us create the step. We'll call it as a step for example for applying the loading, or we can see that better step for applying the pretension. Okay. And that will be placed after initial. The procedure type will be selected as static general, continue. And uh, here uh, it's an uh, we are not going to make use of uh, the nonlinear geometry, so keep it as off and uh, keep the automatic stabilization on. And in the incrementation, what we can do is we can keep this as say, point, point not 0.05 and uh, keep the maximum as a 0.1 because this is a very simple problem. We expect that the convergence to happen very fast. So let us keep this as a minus 15 and keep, keep the as a little larger. So means, uh, okay, so we have created the step. Let us proceed from the next one, that's the interaction. And in the interaction, first of all, we need to define the interaction property. So let us create the type, choose the type as a contact, continue. Define both the tangential as well as the normal behaviors. The tangential will use the penalty function through a friction coefficient of, for example, say 0 0.30. And uh, then again, we go for uh, the normal behavior wherein we will use the hard contact. So this is okay for us. So we define the uh, interaction property. Uh, now we shall specify the uh, interaction through the surface to surface uh, contacts. So uh, let us uh, make use of uh, the inbuilt facility of uh, the backers to find the contact pairs automatically. We'll use this here. So find the contact pairs, pass it. And let us, for example, I will include the pairs with a distance of 10 mm. And this is okay. Find the contact pairs. Obviously, here, as you can see, that we'll have uh, uh, only four K contacts. And these contacts are being uh, rightly highlighted by a backers. So you can just press over here. And you can see that, yes. This indicates, for example, let me just zoom it. Yes, you can see that this indicates the contact between the head of the bolt and the beam surface. And on the other hand, if you see the bolt to beam, you can see that this indicates, for example, the contact between the beam surface as well as the shank surface. So Abacus has rightly picked up the surfaces as expected for surfaces and the property it is automatically assigned. And all other parameters we would like to keep the same default. Anyway, it all depends on the problem if we want to change any property or not. So let us say that find contact pairs. Okay. So this means that we have uh, defined properly um, the interaction. So we can still proceed for uh, the next module that is a load. And in the load, as usual, we need to apply uh, here uh, two things. One is the boundary condition, the second one is the pre-tension in the bolt. So let us first proceed for the boundary conditions. The two ends are being pinned. So 
go over here so we'll call it as a bc boundary condition example i will call it as a print print okay the fine insert through the displacement and the rotation continue now we need to select the surfaces yes we notice that there is one more surface to be selected okay fine so we selected all the surfaces correctly done apply the boundary conditions u1 u2 u3 okay we'll keep it as a restraint okay that's okay for me yes so we have applied the boundary condition at the two ends of the beam so let us proceed for applying the pretension load so first we shall create the load case so load let me call it as load pretension load pretension okay and uh, among the type select the bolt load continue so now we have to select the interior surfaces for the bolted load so if you remember we have already created a partition at this location so means that we have a uh, internal cross section area available to us so let us select it Yes, you can see that yes, the internal surface are being selected. Done. Okay. And now choose one side. You can choose either side, choose the purple. And I would ask you to select a datum axis that is aligned with the bolt center line. For me, it is the X axis. So select it. Now you can start applying. So the pretension can be applied either through a force or through a adjust length method. So here we shall use the apply force method. We will use a small pretension load of say 5 kN. It is a 5000 newton it will be applied using the line function okay okay so you can say that yes it is being correctly okay marked by arrows here so that is the pretension load so means that we have completed the uh, boundary conditions and the uh, application of the bolt pretension so you can uh, straight away proceed for the mesh and uh, in the mesh if you remember we have to mesh it in parts so let us go first to the beam. So here uh, we shall use a, a global mesh size for the entire beam. And uh, obviously in these problems, we expect some kind of stress concentration near the hall. So we need to use a local seed also. Let us apply first of all a global seed. For the beam, we'll use a global seed of 10 mm. So we'll use as a 10 mm. That's OK. So you can see that yes, seeds are being marked properly over here. Now for this circular portion, we'll use a local seed. So go for the local seed. Now it asks you select the regions for the local seed. So let us just enlarge it a little bit because we have to select the edges properly. You can just go over here. Okay. So let us uh, start selecting the edges properly. So let us start. So we have got one edge over here, and also we have got another edge also here. So both edges are being selected. Now we have a similar edge on the other side as well. So just rotate this, okay, and zoom it. So in a similar way, select the two edges, okay. So I will select this edge and also this edge, yes. So now it's process done. And here uh, we shall use by the number. Okay, by number we will be using, for example, four numbers of the seeds. Okay, so we'll use the seeds in such a way that each quadrant is divided into four parts. So apply. Yes, you can see that it is correctly applied. Okay, so this means that our uh, seeding is over. We can simply go for. Uh, the mesh control procedures. So assign the mesh control procedures. Select the regions first. Okay, select the regions and done. And so here we will use hex elements sweep and the middle will choose the middle axis. Okay, okay, fine. And now going to the element selection, select the beam. Okay, done. And uh, here we shall go for the 3D stress element. And it will be C, C3D8R, 8 not of the brick element. Okay, so now we can proceed for the meshing. Okay, yes. So you can see that yes, the meshing is done properly. So you can just inspect over here. Okay, so it is being uh, highly done. So you can just have it, have the front view first. You can see that yes, it is being highly done. 
So you can see that each quadrant is divided into four parts. Okay, so that's okay for us. And if we see the other side also, you can just rotate the model. So we can see that the, the elements are acceptable to us. We need not have to do any kind of a checking because it's a small model. So that's all regarding uh, the beam portion. Now let's let us similarly uh, proceed for meshing of the bolt portion. So select the bolt. Okay, in the bolt. Uh, I think that we have to. We can go only for the global CD. For the global CD, let us go for uh, a 5 mm size. That must be okay for us. So select 5 mm. So this is apply. Okay. Now let us go for uh, the mesh control procedure. So select the regions first. Done. Okay. So here uh, we shall use the tet. That is a tetrahedron elements, and we'll use the free uh, free technique for the meshing. Okay. So that's okay for us, and uh, we can uh, go for uh, the element selection also. And in the element selection, uh, we shall uh, select for uh, the the quadratic. Uh, 10 order a quadratic tetrahedron that's okay for us so let us proceed for the machine so yes so you can see that yes this is acceptable to us this kind of a machine is acceptable to us so this means uh, we have completed the machine as well so we can situate an opposite for uh, submitting the job creating the job and submitting for create so i'll call it as a job for example the pretension pretension okay and continue and now default parameters will keep OK and then submit. Okay, so here you can see that yes, it is submitted and it is running. Okay, fine. So we are in the visualization module and uh, ready to inspect the results. So from the group, let us uh, first remove the bolt. So we can just remove the bolt for the time being. Okay, and, uh, and this shows uh, how the variation of uh, the one by six stresses, we find that the stresses are uh, concentrated uh, basically near the corner points of the section, and the maximum stresses are about 16.41 uh, MPA. And uh, on the other hand, if we take uh, uh, the bolt alone, so let us go here and inspect the stress distribution. So, this is the stress distribution inside the section. So, on the other hand, if uh, let us have that uh, beam or bolt also. Add it, add it, and let us just remove the beam from here. So, remove the bolt beam from here. So, if you see the stress results, so you can see that yes, we have got a, a some kind of a stress distribution, a larger stresses concentrated near the contact points, and that's a 280.7, it's a very large stress. It's all at the contact points, okay. And now going to the displacement, so let us just we're going to the displacement, we expect a larger uh, component of the displacements to happen in the x direction. Okay, so we shall go for uh, the displacement u. So, here uh, let me just put some limits on the so here I am finding maximum displacement uh, to be of the order of say 60.82, but this displacement is not relevant to us. So, let us so if you want to find out the maximum displacement in the section. So best thing is that you will take the bolt out first. Okay, so remove the bolt from this assembly, remove. Okay, so now we, we find that the maximum displacement could be to the tune of say it is being indicated in the gray, in the green color. So could be something around say 30, 32 mm, right? So we can also set the limits here. So for example, uh, you can say that um, specify the maximum as a 35, so 35. And the minimum also, so this is the U magnitude. So we are interested in not U, we are interested in the U1 magnitude, U1. Okay, so we shall set the limits as, uh, example, uh, we'll keep it as, uh, so this is 30.5. So we, have, we want to find out what's the maximum displacement within the section. And let us keep it this as fine as 30.5. 30 okay, apply. Okay, so here you find that the maximum displacement, as you can see, that it is at the center. Okay, All right. So we expect that. Okay, the uh, 
part of the cross section will be pressed inside by the pretension in the bolt okay and the maximum displacement with the section you can see that is of the order of say 30.5 mm and if you see the other side of the section you will find that yes there is a similar kind of a displacement cone do look here so it has been so this, this surface has been pressed inside by the applied pretension so it just means that abacus has rightly applied it and here you can see that the maximum displacement is of the order of say it's again a, so if you see say yes 30.5 something around now if you rotate this cross section okay you just rotate the cross section so let us see the inside also yes so you can see that inside so how the surface is being you know pressed inside by the applied pretension to the bolt now here i would like to show you one more thing that is uh, uh, you want to check whether the pretension has been properly applied or not so let us see the section first in the bolt so from this group what we can do is we can add the bolt here add bolt add and let us remove the beam remove the beam from here now we would like to know uh, what are the section forces with the bolt okay so section forces within the bolt so you can go over here so that is activate or deactivate it. so apply it over here okay and here you can go to the manager view cut manager okay and obviously this section is a uh, normal x axis go over here and just uh, go on sliding you will find that yes so look, read this figure 4.98 into 10 raised to 3 newtons that is we applied 5000 newtons so means that the applied pretension is constant all throughout the board you can read it okay and you will also find that yes some small amount of the moment small amount of the moment when you convert it into kilonewton meter is very small quantity spawn or not one kilonewton meter is also introduced but due to the applied pretension and you can see that the axial pretension is a five kilonewton all constant throughout that is all regarding this tutorial will come with the with very interesting tutorials in the coming week. Till then, bye.